Are you expecting your Tesla soon? Do you already have your Tesla? Are you seeing your sentry mode video being kind of sluggish and slow? Or do you not have enough space for it? Or are you wondering if you have the best USB solution for that? I'm gonna tell you what your two options really are to make sure you have the right USB drive for your Tesla. Let's talk about some of the basics. To use Sentry, you need to have a drive that has sustained write speed of at least four megabytes per second. The drive you use must be USB 2 compatible. If you're using a USB 3 compatible drive, it must be able to support USB 2. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the USB ports in our Teslas are version 2, not version 3. The only exception to that is the glove box USB that's been added recently to new Teslas. That is version 3. Those sneaky bastards. They snuck in a version 3. And that leaves us still with version 2 though in the center console. So for the rest of us that don't have the glove box option and only have USB 2.0 ports in our center console, you have to remember that USB ports, USB 2.0 ports max out at 480 megabytes per second. There's a lot of drives that go much faster than that. So that said, depending on where you're putting your storage device is gonna give you different options for your drive. So what kind of a drive do you need anyway? So there's two types of drives that we're gonna to wanna to look at. One is an SSD, which is a solid state drive. Those are the ones we find in our computers very often. Those are the ones we find in laptops, desktops of varying speeds, anywhere from 400 megabytes per second, or 200, frankly. Older ones are 200 megabytes per second, all the way up to the thousands if you're looking at some of the more advanced M.2 SSDs. But forget all that stuff, that doesn't matter for this conversation. So the options you have are SSD or an SD card. So the SD cards are small, tiny little buggers that are actually a really great option for this type of use case. The only problem with those is that they're a bit slower, sometimes a lot slower than SSD. So the process of viewing your files, viewing your videos might be a little sluggish sometimes. So if there's one thing you take out of this video is to remember that those center console ports are 2.0, USB 2.0. They max out at 480 megabytes per second. If you're spending your money on a fancy drive that goes up to 800 megabytes per second, you're wasting it because there's no way it's gonna be used. But again, if you have that USB 3.0 port in your glove box, sky's the limit for you there because then you can use a super fast SSD or you can just use what Tesla provides or what Samsung provides, which is another option, which is more of a thumb drive looking thing that goes roughly at about 280 megabytes per second, if not a little bit faster. So you can get some serious speed when you're up at USB 3.0 ports. So let's talk about some pros and cons of each. We'll start with the SSD, the solid state drive. Like I mentioned before, generally speaking, SSDs are much faster and their read-write speeds easily exceed the 500 to 700 megabytes per second. Some of them reach 1,000 if not beyond that. What does this mean? This means faster responses when you're browsing and you're watching some of the videos. And of course, it'll mean faster throughput for your cameras to write footage to your drive and there'll be less errors, less problems in the future. One of the major negatives to these is that they will get hot on use. However, many of the newer ones have implemented their own cooling systems of sorts where they throttle the speed and it keeps the temperatures down and again reduces any problems that you might have. Of course this becomes an even bigger problem if you're in a really hot climate all the time and your interior is constantly overheating or if you're in a really cold climate. So the extreme temperatures for these are a bit more narrow when you're looking at SSDs. But again, for the vast majority of us, unless you're leaving the car outside in Alaska for hours, days on end, down to sub-zero temperatures, I think we'd be okay. So no concerns there, generally speaking. Let's talk about the SD cards and some of the pros and cons for them. Going back to the temperatures conversation, while SD cards can handle more excessive temperatures, they're a lot slower. The card that I have, which I'll link below, is about 100 megabytes per second which is snail's pace compared to an SSD of 500 megabytes per second. Another con is that SD cards have a limited lifetime. They are not great for constant read writes. Then again, 
we don't intend on running an operating system or running some apps constantly on these, they're not going to be constantly read writing. So that's something to consider too. So, all right, I, I've twisted and turned. I've gone every single direction here. I probably told you more than you need to with this, but what do you choose? It's entirely up to you. So I think I'm going to go SSD eventually. It just so happens that there's some nice SSD drives for Tesla's ones that have proven to work great. I'll link a few below. If you saw the review I did recently on the Jada USB hub, that's a nice complement to an SSD drive too because it's got a nice spot inside of it, inside of the hub to store it. And they've also released their own SSD solution too. So there's, there's plenty of options out there. You can choose whichever one you want. Both of them will take the footage you need and provide you with a really good solution. But just realize some of the pros and cons of each before you go buy one. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this was helpful as you're looking at different options for your upcoming Tesla. Congratulations. If you have an existing Tesla that you're just looking to change it up, uh, perhaps find a better solution like me. I hope this helped you. There's lots of, uh, lots. if you do a search on this stuff, you'll see lots of competing arguments. There's no right answer to this, but it's important that you understand the details of what you're getting into because we wanna have the best way to uh, capture all that great sentry mode footage, get the dash cam footage when we needed to, that's super important too. We want something reliable, we want it fast, and we don't wanna pay through the nose. Again, check out the options I put below that might help you out. Uh, if it does, let me know. I'm curious if you found success with any of these things. And all right, that's gonna do it for this one. We'll see you guys next time, thanks.